mercifully, finally, for you and certainly for me, good God, this past week plus has been rough. We're getting to the end. We are at the end. The last video in my team by team previews for the 2021 NFL season. If you've missed any of the previous installments for the teams of the AFC West, I've got that link to that playlist in the description box so you can see all four team previews. If you want to be meatier, heartier, and go after more of them, there's also a link there in the description box below that has all 32 of the videos in one playlist. So you can watch them in a series, whatever you want to do. But we're here now to talk about the Super Bowl champions of two seasons ago, last year's AFC champions who lost in the Super Bowl to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Kansas City Chiefs. And, you know, the vibe is slightly different this time, obviously, because it's a lot different being a Super Bowl winner versus a Super Bowl loser. Because at least once you win the Super Bowl, nobody can ever take that away from you. If you're a Super Bowl loser, especially like the Chiefs, they were the defending champs. Like that, that type of loss in that type of fashion in that moment in that spotlight can absolutely be deflating. Because it's not like they lost this really competitive game. It's not like they sat there and lost on some fluke bullshit or a last second field goal or anything like that where they could really hold their head up high. They failed to protect Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes didn't have a good day. The Chiefs defense had a terrible day. And the Bucks basically dominated this thing from beginning to end. And after three quarters, you knew at that point this game was basically over. So now the Chiefs come into this offseason, two-time defending AFC champions with a Super Bowl crown. Like, are they going to be able to get back to that spot? Are they going to be like the Seattle Seahawks where they had a couple of years where they had their chance? And once they didn't cash in the second time, it all kind of went downhill from there. I think this team is constructed differently. I think the leadership of Andy Reid is different than a Pete Carroll. Patrick Mahomes is better than Russell Wilson. So there are reasons to think that that won't happen. That said... You always have the concern, to me at least, is that valid or not, or more superstition or be dumb belief than actual factually based thing. Like, that Super Bowl loser's curse. It's really hard for a Super Bowl loser to get back into that spot again. The Patriots did it a couple of years ago, but that's rare. That's incredibly rare. Incredibly rare. And yet here are the Chiefs, you know, looking at potentially trying to get back and make another deep run and whether or not they have the stuff to be able to do so. Uh, for them, in order for that to happen, first and foremost, they've got to take the memories of what happened this past year and in the Super Bowl, and they've got to take them out of their minds. Can't change the past. It's done. So you can either stew on it, or you can learn from it, grow from it, and improve. Uh, now, this team in the offseason lost a couple of pieces, but nothing that I think is absolutely irreplaceable or causes irreparable harm. Eric Fisher's no, certainly probably the biggest loss. Sammy Watkins. Uh, Tanok Pasagnon and then Bashad Breland are all gone. Uh, they added Jerron Reed, and then obviously they made the big trade, sending their first-round pick to Baltimore for Orlando Brown Jr., who they're bringing into play left tackle to replace, and Eric Fisher. Like That trade was really interesting to me because if you're Baltimore, yes, I know Orlando Brown Jr. wants to get paid. Good for him. He should want to get paid. He earned a raise. I can understand, though, that they might look at it and say, we're not ready to pay him yet. I could also understand Orlando Brown Jr. saying, hey, I want to play left tackle because even though the positions are really similar in terms of their value, left tackles just naturally get paid more still because the pay scale hasn't caught up to the positional reality of offensive tackle in the NFL. Like, if the Ravens aren't going to play me there, I want to go somewhere else where I can do that. But what I don't understand is, for the Ravens, why would you potentially help out the Chiefs? That's the team you're trying to chase. That's the team you're trying to catch. That's the team you're ultimately trying to overcome. That's a team, until proven otherwise, that the Super Bowl appearance from the AFC goes through Kansas City in one form or another. So why in the hell would you do anything to help them out? I don't get that one. But it was a good move for the Kansas City Chiefs nonetheless. Getting younger at that position, that is so important. When you look at the draft, you know, it's always a challenge when you're picking lower or you don't have a whole plethora of picks or both. Uh, the really fine guys that can come in and contribute right away. But when you look at the second round picks that they had, specifically with Nick Bolton, I think he's going to be a day one starter at linebacker, if I'm not mistaken. And then Creed Humphrey in round two. You know, for a team that had some struggles with the offensive line last year that certainly manifested in the Super Bowl, now you've brought in an Orlando Brown Jr. to play outside. You've drafted a Creed Humphrey to kind of anchor the interior of your offensive line. We know Andy Reid loves to draft his offensive and defensive linemen, and it's been 
a way for him to maintain levels of success over the years. First in his job as Philly and then here in Kansas City. But um, this is another example where continue to work on that defense, continue to work on that offensive line. And it's going to potentially pan out really well. When you look at the strengths of this team, obviously, they mostly rely on the offensive side of the ball. Patrick Mahomes is certainly the best, most intriguing physical talent that we've ever seen play the quarterback position. And I really mean that. Like, you've seen better athletes. You know, guys like Michael Vick and Randall Cunningham. Like, when you talk about special type of athletes playing the quarterback position, my God. Especially those younger that didn't get to really see Randall Cunningham, like peak Randall Cunningham. Maybe you have some small memories of 1998 Randall Cunningham jacking up a bunch of shit to Randy Moss in Minnesota. It's not the Randy Cunningham I grew up on. Like, that Cunningham was something. But when you talk about pure physical talent, specifically as a passer, Patrick Mahomes is unmatched in the league. Former league MVP. You've got an elite guy. There are very few elite quarterbacks in the league. The Chiefs have one of them. That makes him even more likely to be a contender. Then you've got Andy Reid. Like, Reid deserves his criticisms over the years for some of the time management stuff and the number of times he made it to a conference championship game and failed to advance to the Super Bowl. But that win in the Super Bowl against the 49ers, you know, was the final thing to me, the breakthrough that says someday Andy Reid's going to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a head coach, and as he absolutely should. Um... And when you look at him from an offensive game plan and structure standpoint, you know, he's still obviously top notch in the league. And then you look at offensively as a combination, one of the best one two combinations in terms of pass catchers in the league, and Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Travis Kelsey's getting a little bit older, but he's still kind of in the peak of his career. Tyreek Hill, obviously, could be a game breaking difference maker outside. Uh, but some question marks still abound for this team. Like, where's the running game going to come from? Their running game was kind of mid last year with Clyde Edwards, Alaire, and others. Uh, you did take Alaire in the first round in 2020. You're going to want him to play more like a first round pick this year. The pass rush, you know, they pay some big money to guys uh, like Chris Jones and Frank Clark, and their production last year was less than outstanding, and at least statistically from a sack standpoint. Um, so, where's that pass rush going to come from this year? And then I look at their secondary. You've got some unheralded guys, some younger guys back there. That's a unit that if that pass rush can't get to opposing quarterbacks, that secondary could certainly be vulnerable and give up some big plays. Um, as I transition to kind of talk about Kansas City's schedule, like you look at the beginning of the year, the first three weeks, right away, bam, bam, bam. Hosting Cleveland, who gave you fits in the AFC Divisional round this past season. You've got to go to Baltimore in week two, and then you got to host the Chargers in week three. So the schedule makers did the Chiefs no favors early on in terms of giving them a cupcake opponent to start with or in the first couple of weeks, you know, to sit there and be able to figure things out. Like, they got to go in there and they got to try and win these games right away early on in the year so it doesn't come back to bite them in terms of tiebreakers and so forth later on in the season. Then in week five, they've got the game at home against Buffalo. Week nine at home against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Anybody else excited to see that shit? Patrick Mahomes versus Aaron Rodgers? Sign me the fuck up. And then week 16, hosting Pittsburgh. Uh, like I said, the schedule, it's got some really tough games on there, especially to start the season. But man, oh man, oh man. It still sets up relatively well for them. Um, in terms of where I project them, like obviously I'm still thinking the Chiefs are going to win this division. Obviously. I don't think it's going to be by as much of a margin as it's been the past couple of years. Because um, I think the Chargers are closing the gap. I think the Broncos have gotten a little bit better, and the Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders. Um, but there's also that piece of, like, when you have that window of time with your current roster construction, it only lasts but so long. That could be really, really tough to get back to that same level of wins many times over. Like I said, I still think they're going to be the champs of the West, certainly positioned, at least on paper right now, to be the number one seed. Maybe Buffalo could end up being the number one seed, and Chiefs would be second. That would be a big thing for Buffalo if they could pull that off. Um, but realistically, this team still has Patrick Mahomes. They still have Andy Reid. And as a result, like they're a contender. They're a legit Super Bowl contender. And it's certainly not unprecedented to think that this team could kind of buck the trend of Super Bowl losers that go back the next year and go to the Super Bowl and actually potentially win it. Like It almost feels like it was bad timing for them when they faced the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and bad situation facing them in Tampa for the Super Bowl. If the situation was flipped and both teams were healthy, maybe it's different, maybe it's not. Who knows? But um, 
Yeah, this Chiefs team is still going to be one of the marquee teams in the AFC and the NFL as a whole. And we'll see if they can get back to the Super Bowl this year.